With Australia's red meat industry aiming to be carbon neutral by 2030, the race is on to find products that reduce methane emissions from sheep and cows. Some companies have found early success feeding seaweed to livestock. But hot on their heels are businesses developing synthetic pellets and powders. Delatite Station in northeast Victoria is a proud supplier of beef for Coles' new carbon neutral range. But right now, the meat only really becomes carbon neutral when the supermarket giant buys carbon credits. 75% of our emissions are from methane, so we can do all those uh, fine tuning things, but until we crack the nut of reducing emissions, it's going to be reasonably hard work. Cracking the methane emissions nut, so to speak, is big business. A Dutch company, Royal DSM, has been working on a synthetic methane busting product called Bovair for more than a decade. The main form is a powder which is basically blended into the feed, but we can also pellet it or make it in other forms as needed. And as the cow consumes it, it works in the rumen and reduces methane along the way. The company says trials in Australian feedlots have shown Bovair can reduce methane emissions by up to 92%. It really depends on what's the, the diet and the ration combination. So we've seen anywhere between 50 and 90%. And it depends then really what the feedlot feeds, whether you're closer to the 90 or whether you're closer to the 50. Bovair's chemical name is Threnold and it's made from nitric acid and bio-based alcohol. So it's been absolutely safe to feed to animals, now approved and commercialised in over 45 countries globally. Uh, has gone also through, for example, the European Food Safety Authorities, which looks at safety for humans, safety for animals, safety for the environment and of course efficacy. The company says feeding Bovair to beef cattle will cost less than 50 cents per animal per day. So roughly $180 per animal per year. And for dairy cows, it would add one and a half cents to the cost of producing a litre of milk. I think in the near term, it's much more about creating additional value and seeing how can you move into some of the premium markets and capture that temporary, I think, benefit. Um, but I think over time, all companies will reduce their emissions and then it becomes more around market access. Here on Australian shores, the CSIRO has attracted global attention for its own breakthrough discovery. It found that feeding red seaweed, or asparagopsis, as it's scientifically known to cattle, can reduce methane emissions in feedlot animals by up to 90%. The product is now being commercialised by companies like CH4 Global, where the seaweed is dried and milled into a powder that gets mixed in to an animal's normal feed mix at a rate of 50 grams a day. All of our evidence, all of our trials have shown that cows uh, enjoy, eat and benefit from eating the seaweed. The big question mark over asparagopsis is how much it will cost. So that's a, that's a difficult one to answer at the moment. I've heard though from someone who has been buying this that it's costing about $2 a day per animal. So if you work that out over a year, it's costing $730 per year per animal. Are they telling the truth there? Is that about right? Um, that's not the, that's not the uh, large scale scaled up version price, but that's absolutely a reasonable um, amount for now. <laughs> Do all the hard work on formulations. Hot on the heels of the seaweed companies is Perth businessman David Messina. After noticing what he describes as the CSIRO's dramatic results from asparagopsis trials, he and his business partners challenged themselves to stabilise its active ingredient, bromoform, in a lab. A good example is aspirin, which naturally occurs on the bark of, of willow, willow trees, um, and we, we obviously don't grow uh, willow trees to, to uh, supply our aspirin requirements. So now we do that in a pharmaceutical production um, environment that can be scaled, uh, it gets the cost down and gives you an exact amount uh, in every tablet um, that you have and in exactly the same way uh, is what we're doing with uh, the bioactive out of the seaweed. 
Laboratory tests suggest their product, Ruminate, reduces methane emissions by up to 95%. But the company believes a good field result would be more than 85%. From uh, a sort of granule to powder to a lucerne. Uh, pellet mix. So far, a lot of the trial work being done on methane Little reduction one. is in feedlots. But Ruminate is testing a soluble product at Central Queensland University in Rockhampton that could work for grazing and rangelands cattle. We're looking at effects on, on feed digestibility, but also on water intake. If it affects palatability, that would be an issue, right? Mm-hmm. The product that we're delivering uh, via water systems um, will be used anywhere where the animals are grazing. Uh, So that could be southern farming systems or it could be the extensive rangeland systems where animals uh, are only seen once or twice a year. If the trials are successful, David Messina hopes to have ruminate on the shelves of agricultural supply shops by the end of 2025. We're targeting $100 uh, per animal per year, uh, assuming it's using our product uh, for the whole year. Uh, The amount per dose may change depending on what formulation we're using, um, but that's our target price. Richard Eckhard is a professor of livestock production systems at Melbourne University. He sees a role for all three products, as long as they keep passing clinical trials and, crucially, become cheaper. There are a few studies around at the moment that would say in the livestock industries, 20 cents per day per animal is about the limit of what farmers could pay and, and, and come out neutral. But Richard Eckard believes feed additives are just one part of the puzzle when it comes to reducing methane. Where we reckon the big breakthrough will come is in an area called early life programming, which is where we've discovered that by intervening at the weaning stage of an animal, we can actually train them to be low methane from then on. Um, and there's some fascinating studies that have used these inhibitors we've been talking about for the, in the cows and calves through the weaning phase and then you stop feeding the inhibitor and they just stay low methane afterwards. While low methane cattle might seem like a faraway concept, carbon neutral beef is coming to a shelf near more of us soon. The Coles range, which was first launched in Victoria, is now available in New South Wales, South Australia and Tasmania. Some of our biggest stores where it's selling up to 200 packets a week, uh, which is really promising. We're also about to expand it uh, into other states, so the range will be national by April this year. The company has already been involved with trials of Bovair and believes methane reduction additives will be used in the livestock industry in the future. Yeah, I think it's really important that as an industry, producers start to interact with their customers around what they're looking for with sustainability. Where should they start? Should it be around uh, completing a carbon footprint? Years ago we put put all these in because it was the right thing to do. I think it's a case of, you know, it's going to be a licence or a ticket to play play the game. You know, you, you need this information if you want to be involved in niche markets or perhaps the general market going forward.